Okay, I think we're connected. Hello, all of you who might be watching and or listening. This is another episode of The Legend of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign hosted by me. This is the second campaign in the same Omation universe of my own devising. This is campaign two, The Great Confusion, a title chosen for thematic reasons, which seems to get more and more accurate every time I do anything with this. Uh, technical problems. I'm the, the host and GM, world creator, and generally breaker of all technology. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, but I'm joined, thankfully, by my players, starting on my left with Pat. You're on mute. My name is Pat, and I am playing Silas Marsh. I am also on mute. <laughs> my name is Murray, and uh, I play in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on mute. Uh, yeah, it's just joking. Anyway, my name is Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. Okay, let's see if we can recall where we had been. Well, in fact, I'm going to switch to another screen to give us a visual. As the group has been, if people can recall, it's been a little while, but has been essentially on a submission of a submission. Although that sounds like submission, which is not really what's going on. Uh, in one of the overarching elements that's going on in the strange place of Omesha, and in particular the strange place of Silver Moon Bay, and even more particular in the town uh, of Ilthwater, is a, a seeming concentration of the search for the remnants of a lost god, a god who should no longer exist. Now, the players are aware of this because of previous campaign, the god Paluxia had been removed from the world and was slowly being reintroduced, but this time, a thousand years in the past of that, the goddess has just been removed, and some elements linger. And uh, on a mission for Tassar, Tassar, um, who is a, an old guy who seems to know a lot about a lot and doesn't say a lot, but also uh, has some knowledge of portals or the strange additional random portals that are opening up uh, around uh, the town but had basically suggested if you could go through this portal and and uh, try to retrieve and or destroy and or otherwise investigate um there can be some some rep, uh, some uh, return for that in the future having gone through that portal you found yourselves first in uh, a way station of sorts what looks to be an old uh, teaching outpost potentially of the argenti segex who you know uh, vaguely as a long lost uh, order of adventurers, researchers, it's hard to say. But they did seem to have a lot of knowledge about the multiplanar universe and its traversal. But here you found only a stagnant old outpost with nothing more than the dead bodies of a few of the Argenti Sagax long dead. And also um, an old friend, a peculiar beholder with a bow tie, one Tauzek Riva who seemed to be, at that point, negotiating something with the Baroness. But when you encountered Tauzek Riva, you made a bargain. Perhaps a bargain bought with a little bit of blood, as you were fighting against some strange invaders in this, well, chunk of rock that seems to be floating in the Astral Sea. Not quite sure of the navigation point there. Anyway, Tauzek Riva pointed you to another gateway that exists within this one. There's nothing much at this particular place, but kind of made a sub-bargain with you. Uh, go through with one of his servants in tow, the, the one-eyed Nothic named Gosh, and find something interesting with which he was willing to share uh, all of your uh, findings and try to share what he knows as well. Having traversed through that gate, you found yourselves in a valley of sorts, in another Earth-like plain with jar large purple worms swimming overhead. Indeed, you found a nest of them you had to traverse, and then found yourselves through another gate 
man, this sounds long when I say it this way, uh, into a strange four-cornered room. In this room, in these rooms, you found a moving wall, in fact, a wall that moved in two parts, an upper and a lower, that rotated in opposite directions. Strange markings on the walls translated by Gosh from some sort of ancient language. And accompanying you also is Dudek, Dudek Bitterhorn, a scholar of sorts who also has a personal fascination with the Argenti Sagex, although not a lot more knowledge about them specifically than you do. Now, we find ourselves in this, this room, uh, and I'm thinking that we can move a little f faster through this. You have explored all four corners of this particular room. You know the mechanism that's at, place, at play. You know how to move the rooms, and you know that there are certain things to solve. So rather than moving in real time through each of the rooms once more, which you still know are somewhat treacherous depending on which way you go, I'd like to promote, propose that you move, we move in a more abstract method. In other words, it's going to come down to a, uh, a skill challenge, with a skill challenge with a little bit of a difference. In the skill challenge, there are a couple of other things that you've already determined most of, but not necessarily figured out exactly the right combination. You know that there are words on the upper and lower uh, walls in some places, and symbols, it seems, on others. So, if you can figure out, or if you can propose what the correct combination of those is from your experience so far, uh, then... Uh, Sorry, I'm seeing an error message here, but it seems to be okay. Uh, then we will count that as one success towards your goal of solving this puzzle. You also are pretty sure that the, uh, the crystals, you found four crystals uh, of varying colors that seem to correspond somewhat to the elements. And you also note that each room has a, uh, a sconce to hold up to four crystals. If you were able to get the right uh, right placement for that, then that would count as another success. Guessing, however, would be like failing a roll. And in this case, each failure of the roll is gonna produce a certain amount of damage. Depending on the type, I'm gonna have it rolled here just to see. Um, to simulate, essentially, you struggling through this. Now, you may succeed fairly quickly, uh, but it may take you a while. Is that amenable to everybody? Okay. Kind of move to, instead of going through all the, the, the complicated wheels and things I've set up there, uh, we'll simplify it a bit. So in this process... Can we just get a, a review of, of what each was? Yeah. <laughs> well, I sure. Boats, but like partial and we can I absolutely do that. Yeah, I have a list of the different things. We can definitely uh, review that before we do anything. I just want a couple of other little things. Nat 20s will count as two successes. Um, as I said, a failure, and the, the difficulty is 15 on this. Um, each or getting the guess of, or getting the, the alignments wrong will be another failure. That produces damage. Um, only the PCs can roll, but you can request an NPC to help you if it's appropriate. Um, an NPC can only help on essentially a round. So until everybody has gone through once, all three of you have gone through once, the NPC can only help once. So, for example, uh, Dudek could help Annie, but then couldn't help Silas or Medric. But once all three of you have tried, then we'll count that essentially as a round. They can try again. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for a total of five successes. Um, there's no particular end point. Uh, you should be able to get it within five. Sorry, I interrupted, but I just in, want to clarify those last theory. things. In theory. If not, you will be taking some damage, um, which again represents the trickiness of this puzzle. Uh, I will accept if there are questions you have about the puzzle that you should have observed. I can certainly review those things. But Pat, you have the notes on what you found on the wall so far. Uh, one thing was the wall sconces. We already have them placed so that all of the rooms are energized. Does that count as a success or is that that is not a not. success. And I will, I will give you that one for free because you've already seen what the result is. Hmm. Okay. I'll read out what I've got here. 
uh, for wall sayings, there are four, say, uh, well, there's two sets of sayings along the top. One was in your mind, uh, opposite it is in your heart. The second set is in acknowledging fear, and across from it was from the universe. Then on the bottom, there's all is conquered and all is revealed. And the other, the other set is the doorway is open and the knowledge blooms. Um, we probably have to pair those up correctly, I'm guessing. Uh, as for the pictures on the central pillar, uh, in the earth room, there's a picture of someone climbing a mountain and a picture of someone looking off into the distance. In the void room, I think it was, there's a, one picture is of a set of double doors and the other picture was a stone arch that shows a different place through it. And the water room, one, uh, one was of a tall figure holding an amphora with water raining down on people. And the other one was a mountainous pile of ice and snow floating in a large area of water with a large serpent swimming around it. And in the fire room, one was an ex of an exploding volcano and the other was a group of people gathered around a bonfire with long shadows coming from them. And I will say that um, for the individual roles, um, the person making the role and anybody assisting that role um, will take any consequences from it for the uh, the uh, getting the, the the other things right. Um, it will be everybody will take the consequences if it's wrong. Uh, so are Do you we? Mind repeating that? I I understood two things that conflict each other so i just want to make sure that it's me not understanding from from me okay so you can make individual roles to get successes yes. if you make an individual role and someone helps you you and the person helping you are going to be the ones taking the consequences if it's wrong if it's right there's no consequences if you want to try to get the successes uh get some of the successes from uh the uh the other things the uh the sconces and, and the crystals uh the words and the symbols um then if it's wrong everybody takes the consequence so there's a little bit more risk but it's also not a role it's a determination that the players can make what they want to try okay so when we're making a role, are we, do we guess something and then make a role? Um, to, or are we just making a role and see if we get a success? So in the making a role, it's just a role and a success. I would ask for some justification about why that role will help you with that success. Um, but I'm open to a broad interpretation of that. Um, in the case of making the guesses towards the other things, it's just a guess. There's no rule, and you're either right or you're wrong. Yay. And feel free to talk at it amongst yourselves. Go ahead and you can talk about the different combinations if you want to until you say, we're going to try this combination. I'm not going to penalize or anything like that. Nothing's changing during that time. Okay. Well... The only thing that I believed was right was the sconces, and that was wrong, so I have no ideas. Wait, where are the sconces set up like right now? We have like each element and it's appropriate. We have, we have a crystal in each room that is making the room do its elemental thing. Mm -hmm. But that apparently is wrong. All the okay. other spots on them did nothing as far as we could tell. That is correct. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I do not know. Yeah, same. Well, I would like to make an arcana check to see if I can figure anything out. Okay, so what is that applying to? Uh, what, what specifically are you trying to figure out? Because then I can give you an answer as well as a success. Let's say the sconces. 
Okay. There's what about the sconces? Somehow. If you want more details, I don't have any. Okay. Are you going to ask have anybody? No idea. Um, are you going to ask anybody what we to help? determined from the sconces is that there was one of the rocks was in the incorrect room, so we moved it to the correct room. Yeah. Yeah, in the case At of the sconces, you have determined an order that seems to be correct. Yeah, we believe that we have the right stones in the right rooms now and in the right positions, but we don't. So what we were thinking was not correct. Okay. Okay. And we you... found, I believe, the water stone in the fire room. Yes. Yes. So right, we, because... don't know if, we don't know if that was right or not. So. Because I remember, like, I forget if it was an insight check or something or a perception roll that I did well on. But the idea was that there might have been, like, other parties being challenged in these rooms oh. and oh, they yeah, tried this... moving stones and they fucked up and they died. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a puzzle to either die or get through or leave. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I expect many groups have been through here before. Um, and again, you can ask either Judek or Gosh to help you. Um, and depending on kind of the flavor of the question, and if you have someone to help you, that may determine what I'm going to respond with, essentially. Wait, Crispy is still with us, right? He's, in, he's a red dot? Uh, it's true. Crispy is there as well. Crispy really has limited ab ability to help with anything, though, being pretty much just flame. Um, but he lives here, though, so he must know something. He doesn't or live he here. Lives like he lives in fire. Okay. And so yeah. not being in fire, he f is also he a lot less powerful. Okay. Yeah, each of these rooms was pulling stuff in from their elemental plane. In fact, I think when last session there were things of Earth that were starting to appear. Have those not appeared? I'm going to uh, be kind and say that while they were they appeared, they seemed to be non-threatening and were easy to get out of the way of. Uh, yeah. It looked like living stones were kind of popping up, but as long as you stayed out of their way, they didn't seem to attack. No, they're just passing through. You also notice that not not all the time are the things that are summoned necessarily uh, antagonistic. Crispy was not antagonistic, for example. He just made a fire, which made getting close to him a problematic for most people. Um, you also encountered a water elemental that seemed more curious than dangerous. And you also encountered some water beasts uh, that seemed elemental in nature, but were definitely angry about it. I'll just uh, ask Crispy, it's like, do you have any idea how this thing works? I mean, in the fire room. Uh, and there was a water in, crystal. What happened with that? Yeah, in Ignan, um, Crispy basically responds with a shrug. There's no real idea of any of this going on. So he was not paying attention. <laughs> you, you get the impression or he that he just doesn't know. Yeah, he's he's not really that intelligent, and puzzle solving is not among his forte. If you wanted him to burn something, he could probably do that. Um, he can also, you know, squeeze through places as well. He refuses to go anywhere near the water room, though. Yeah. When I looked at this place earlier with Detect Magic, were the pillar pictures magic? I don't remember uh, if they were or weren't. I don't remember what I said last time, but I will say that they are not magical in nature. Okay. Stylus is going to go over and poke them and see if they move. Okay. Um, they are solid stone. Solid okay. stone carvings. And they do not shift as the walls shift. They stay in place with the same facing. Yeah. Well, at a guess... We need to match up one of the top sayings with the one that says the doorway is open. But that's kind of all I've got. Hmm. And what's the what's the correct top saying? 
no idea it's either in your mind the doorway is open in your heart the doorway is open in acknowledging fear the doorway is open or from the universe the doorway is open it could theoretically be any of those so no just... because there's it's v's right so there's they're not going to be in line with whatever's on the like a saying on the left side is not oh, going to be i suppose be in line yeah it's with... still left right through that yeah uh i think we've you said yeah i think it would have it i think it's in your mind the doorway is open and igna in acknowledging Fear the doorway is open because I think I wrote those all on the left side. Are we able to see the full wheel? Uh, yes, I can reveal the full wheel. Uh, I, I'm a very visual person. Yes, yeah, I can't my remember notes the are like unless I see them. <laughs> across multiple sessions for this, so it's not helping. <laughs> Just a second. They moved a few things, so I was getting used to it here. Try to delete the walls. See if I can delete the walls. Feel free to discuss amongst yourselves while I flail about with technology for a moment. So, yeah, so it would end up being either in acknowledging fear the door is open if that's what's on the left side yeah mm -hmm. all yeah, right in your mind or in your mind open in your heart the knowledge blooms And then in acknowledging fear, all is conquered, and from the universe, all is revealed. So it's either in your mind, all is conquered, in acknowledging fear, the doorway is open, or the other way around. Yeah. So you should be able to move your tokens around the map if you want to see the different angles. Um, We'll take it as you guys have taken notes. You started to write down on on, uh, on uh, you know a map essentially for yourselves. I think that I think that this set of word combinations is correct because the shape ones are showing like an open line rather than a series of boxes. Yeah. And that just feels maybe like it's open and thus meaning an open portal. I don't know for sure though. Okay, you wanna try that guess? Sure. Unfortunately, that guess is incorrect. Um, so there will be a uh, an amount of damage, and mm -hmm. you kind of will get the intention, get the impression too that um, things are getting more threatening. So there's actually a round counter that will be applied to the damage as well. Uh, so someone roll me a d6, please.
Okay. Uh, everybody can make a strength save. And I will try not to get the wrong screen. Eight. You're, you're looking for a, strength modifier. Cool. You're looking for a 15, unfortunately. Ah. None of us. Okay. Uh, everybody takes six uh, force damage. Essentially, as the the ground, no matter where you are, starts to shift and realign, but unfortunately, it throws you off a bit. Oh, I will roll for uh, Dudek. Uh, I have root careful. resistance to force, so that would be half. Correct. That would be half. That's correct. Um, so that's your first attempt. Unfortunately, that. Uh, I'm just going to roll uh, uh, both Gosh and Four. Um, oh, wrong page. Wrong keyboard. Gosh, making a strength save. No extra bonus. Fail. And for Dudek. Strength save. Uh, that is not enough as well. So yes, both of them take that damage. Fail. Six point. Did did everybody in the party fail? Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I was I was the closest with my very bad strength. And with my with my very good strength, I was not the closest. <laughs> well, I have a strength save a plus three. Yeah, I know, but I still roll shit. No, I mean I mean Marie. <laughs> that, that's fair. I forgot I have stuff for for state saves that gives me extra but yeah so unfortunately that particular guess did not prove correct okay then let's see if it's the other one and indeed the other one being what uh the way it is not right now <laughs> Uh, so, in your mind, all is conquered, all is conquered in acknowledging yeah. the doorway is open. All right. In acknowledging fear, sorry, there was a bubble in on top of the last word there. All right, and indeed. Helps if you're using the right keyboard. Uh, Can and we just establish that, like, when we we hit the thing, we're flattening ourselves onto the floor mm -hmm. to not be kicked. <laughs> Yeah, now that you're used to where it's going and you can block half of it if you need to with the immovable rod, it's fairly easy to go. Just kind of keep spinning the rooms until you get something. Uh, and indeed, when, uh, although from the perspective where you're at, the phrase you're seeing is in your mind, all is conquered, in your heart, all is revealed. Um, in the opposite space, what you have uh, revealed is in acknowledging fear, the doorway is open, and from the universe, the knowledge blooms. And you get the sense that, uh, indeed, something about that particular combination resonates. There's a, a deep psychic wave that seems to shift through. Uh, it is, although um, probably uh, Annie doesn't experience this, but everybody else gets the sensation of some psychic wave traveling through their minds. Uh, and it's a sense of, of satisfaction. So indeed, you have one success uh, right now because of that. 
So you've determined the right orientation for the rooms relative to each other or rather the walls relative to each other. And indeed, if you examine the other spaces, the, the uh, squares and diamonds are aligned. So you said it was in acknowledging fear, the way it's open and from the universe, the knowledge blooms? That's Just correct. Right. The oh, doorway yeah. is open, yes. So, still on that first round, you can still do individual actions. You can still do the group action of trying to figure out the, uh, the uh, uh, sconces. And I will say there's another part to figure out. If you figure out what that is, you can also do that. But I'm not going to give much more hints than that. And then there's the individual actions to, to for example, determine more about what's going on which could reveal the other thing you can guess. Well, there was like squares and diamonds on the walls to those. Mm -hmm. Yep, the lower parts were not words. They were what looked to be just squiggles and either lined up to be one solid line or lined up to be um, squares or diamonds. And on reflecting on it, no um, Dudek kind of kind of remarks, "Well, they they did like to have a sort of certainty of purpose and of of action. So I suppose that makes sense that they are seeking to create solidity with their symbolism as well as their words. And there was a great amount of unknown in the work that they were doing, traveling across the plains." So I suppose acknowledging fear seems fair. Hmm. And for example, you can also make a roll to get a clue. <laughs> and I can flavor the clue to whatever the roll happens to be, but I will offer that as well. Does it have to be an end roll? <laughs> no, it can be any roll you want. Okay. Quick, do some uh, push-ups. <laughs> um, it can be any role you want, but it does have to be some sort of relevant action. And again, I have a broad interpretation of relevant. The, oh, no. Go no, go ahead. I just wanted to refresh on what the pictures on the pillars were. Uh, in our, uh, in the Earth room that we're currently in, the the. And I believe these are top and bottom. Uh, I believe the top one is someone climbing a mountain, and the bottom is someone looking off in the distance. Uh, in the void room, there is a one was a set of double doors, and the other one was a stone arch that shows a different place through it. That one kind of implies that that different place through it one is a thing but I don't know how how it figures in anything. In the water room, there was a tall figure holding a amphora with wa uh, pouring water down on people and one of a huge pile of ice and snow floating in a large area of water with a sea serpent swimming around it. And then in the fire room, there was an exploding volcano and then there was one of a group of people gathered around a bonfire with long shadows coming from them. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if part of it is lining up the specific sayings with a specific room. Hmm. And I will say that, again, you can get clues by making rolls. It's a risk, obviously. Uh, but if you wanted to make an appropriate uh, roll, then I can answer questions like that. Well, a perception roll would work, I suppose. Assuming I don't botch it, like I did the strength roll. And you can ask uh, Gosh or Dudek to help you with any of these rolls once per round. Uh... Uh, 
We do I, have a, do I have to have a specific question in mind or? Yeah. Crap. Well, my the question in the back of my of the player's mind is like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> do I have to work that? <laughs> that a, would a little be a little. Yeah, it's a little too broad for uh, yeah. <laughs> for this. Um. Uh, to your earlier question, Marie, um, if this phrase combination is the right one, then this is the only way the rooms can be arranged to have that. Uh, if we see those there, there, there. So I'm just trying to. Yeah, uh, any other, if we try to get the words into any of the other rooms, it's going to end up being a different combination. Uh, we can't have, uh, in acknowledging fear, the doorway is open in any other room other than the fire one because of the way they rotate. Do you want to put that to a test? No, that's incorrect. Because if if they move opposite ways, right? So if yeah. two go one way, two go the other. Yeah, but to get that specific combination, uh, one second, if fear goes there, open there. Sorry, we can we can turn it 180 degrees, but we can't have the two side ones. Uh, the two side ones would be in acknowledging fear. Uh, all is revealed, or in acknowledging fear, all is conquered. Mm -hmm. If we could, if we could move one section at a time and not both top and bottom in opposite ways, then we could, but we can't, as far as we've seen. Actually, I'll give you this for free. You actually can and have done that. Yeah. Because that's what the immovable rod is for, is to plot, block the other one. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if it is blocked. Hmm. So, because what if it's this arrangement of yeah. sentences, but it needs to be in a different room? Yeah, yeah. Because if... Because there is the void room that has... Well... That doesn't necessarily line up because... Uh, yeah, the I mean, the void room is the one that has the picture showing an arch with a different place through it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we... Give me two seconds. My brain is a, vi is a visual brain. Yeah. We definitely... Yeah, if we, because we can lock one, we definitely could arrange it in such a way to have this uh, that sentence about the doorway is open be in the void room yeah I'm just trying to think that's the only one that's the only room that's shouting to me something about a door And I mean, it's two pictures, or one with uh, doors closed and one with an open arch. Yep. Um. Yeah, I'm all for trying that one. Likewise, I have no better ideas. <laughs> okay, so what are you trying? Well, so we're, we're going to yeah. try to line up the... In and acknowledging fear the door is open with the void room because that's one that the pictures have a door depicted in. I believe that that's what we, yeah. where we're at. Whatever combination of having to lock a wall in place while the other one moves, we'll do that to get the uh, doorways open in that room. So I believe that's the alignment you're going for. Did you say which room did you say? Sorry, I just wrote it in once, but void yeah. room. 
Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right one. Okay, once more there is that psychic release as something feels like it's fallen into alignment. Um, while they can describe it, Annie, you're not experiencing it, but for you, it is almost the same effect as when you are picking a lock and you know that another tumbler has fallen into place and there's that slight, ever so slight element of, uh, of uh, force that, uh, that lines up when that happens. And that is the second success. Hey. Okay. Okay, now the wall sconces seem to control the flow of energy to it, maybe? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we have to turn the void room, uh, the non void rooms off so only it gets power. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Silas is just gonna like in the earth room where we are, he's gonna go over to the wall sconce and take their stone out and see what happens. Okay, nothing appears to happen. Is it is the place still rumbling? Uh, not actively, no. So that does dissipate. dissipate. Actually, I suppose that would be a a lessening like of happening. not happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah, Silas is going to wander over to the water and fire rooms and remove their stones. Okay, that will be a roll. Yep. What kind of roll, and are you asking for assistance from anyone? Well, Gosh is almost as close to dying as I am. I'm tempted to ask him just so if I get whacked, he does too. But uh, <laughs> that's probably not something Silas would really do. Uh... No, no the vagueness is starting to fade, but if you require more healing, I can offer a little bit. Uh, I've still got a few healing words in the ring if necessary. Okay. Um, maybe could I roll it? Uh, well, I mean, I could go with sleight of hand. Okay. Or I could go with arcana. Whatever you want to make for a roll. Difficulty 15. Okay. The, if it's my choice, I'll use Arcana because it's bigger. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you had asked uh, Gosh for help, you would have succeeded, but unfortunately you do not. <sighs> so as you are slipping through and trying to put these uh, things in their pro or pull them away, I guess, from the appropriate places, Meanwhile, they're still active and still somewhat threatening. Uh, please roll me a d6. Three. Okay. Uh, and you make it halfway around the rooms, and finally in the fire room, you are caught by something. I have a whole lot of ease because I was pressing the wrong button here. Let me uh, roll the damage. I should know better than have two keyboards and two mice, but I am nonetheless. Uh, and you take eight points of fire damage. Oh, sorry, you can make a dex save to try to save for half. I don't think I can, but let's try. No, uh, no awfully close. Uh, 15 again for that save. So you take eight points of fire damage. Um, you do succeed in pulling up all of those stones, though, which is, the, I think, the only thing you were actually trying to do. Uh, basically, yeah. Yep. And so now, do you pull up, uh, you said all four? Not the void one. Okay. Just the one from fire and water, because we already had the air. Okay. Or, or. And even if you don't pass into the void area, you can feel that sense of, of energy that was there when the stone had been put in place. A sort of psychic slash, uh... Uh, intangible energy that's flowing into that room. And now you have three stones. And you're back with your friends. Um, but still only two successes. How many successes did we need? Five. Five, I think. 
five. Okay. Uh, Silas does a quick combine or quick uh, look at them and says, "There's if we want to put the stones back in these rooms, there's 81 different combinations, assuming we keep the elemental types within the same room." I don't know 81. if just randomly slotting them is going to keep us alive. I feel like we, I feel like we don't have time for that. Yeah, unless we get lucky on the first like three. Mm. And Silas is going to use one of the uh, healing spells out of the ring. It's four hit points back. Get that off. Oh. I forgot I could have given someone inspiration. Hmm. It's almost like we all haven't played in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to give someone inspiration, what was the what's the cause? Why can you give someone inspiration? I'm a bard. I just make them want. I just make them think that they're doing well. Oh, bardic inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Um, I forgot I could give guidance too. Her Peter. Yeah. Probably want to pull out all the stops. Yeah. To make sure well, you that how we're rolling. <laughs> when we found the void room, the stone actually seemed to be in the right place. Hmm. Well, Hmm. Huh. I guess Silas is going to take the Earth Stone and try just one at a time placing it in the other three spots in the Earth Room. Okay. Uh, I'll watch him like just stand ready in case the walls start to move or something. What kind of? Uh, well, you've already rolled, so technically it should be someone else who should be providing it for this round, or the round essentially ends and the round counter goes up. Because uh, remember, it's the idea that there are rounds for each of you to do something, and then if all of you, if nobody else chooses okay. to do something, then the round goes up. Which will yep. make it a slightly more threatening, but not much. In that case, uh, one of you guys do something. I will do an insight check to figure out what's going on. <laughs> okay, insight is really against people, but what uh, what are you trying oh. to get insight about? And from whom, or, I mean, the builders of this technically were people, so you yeah, can kind of use that as well. Right, like, it's okay. like, what was going through their minds when they built this place? And like, what, what was its purpose? I mean, like, I know it was to travel through planes, but like... Okay. Do you want to... Try to get insight on their, like, their puzzling style, basically. Do you want to have Dudek or Gosh help you? Dudek, yes. Okay. So you and Dudek so do go into a corner, start talking this through, trying to use his knowledge. That gives you advantage. Difficulty 15 still, but, uh, and you're doing insight, right? Yeah. Guidance. Okay. Oh, Thank and you. You, can, you can do the thing. I have plus nine insight, so I should be good, but I don't want to just jinx it. Well, you have a bardic inspiration. And advantage. All right. Let's do this. There's a 28. 28. There we go. And 11. So I'm glad I had advantage, otherwise I would have failed. <laughs> well, no, 28 was the first roll. You would have succeeded on the 28. So you and Dudek right. put your heads together and start talking about it as you start thinking and saying, like, what were they thinking when they built this? Um, in what way are you approaching that? Is it is it kind of just in wondering? Is it in anger? What the hell were they thinking? Is it uh, in wonder? Is like, what what could they have been thinking, these wondrous people of the past? Uh, what's your, your tone of that? Curiosity, mostly. Okay. Your curiosity is quite anger because anger doesn't really get shit done. Like, I don't want to, like, replace that in my life. But... Anger <laughs> leads to, uh, uh, I forget the whole, uh, anger is the little death that leads to complete destruction, something like that from Dune. Uh, well, kind of... your your curiosity uh, resonates well with Dudek. Who starts I try to, to understand, like, what kind of mind state they were in, basically. Uh, he, 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 he kind of wanders a little bit from the point, um, getting into lecture mode. Um, you do learn at some point during this that he actually used to give historical lectures. That was one of the things he did before he started to do his own research. Um, that's why he's so connected in the, in the past. But um, 
as they, uh, as you were talking about it, um, he uh, alights upon the idea similar to what he'd said before. Just as they wish to have a solidarity and recognize that there's power coming from all the planes, it does stand to reason that concentrated power is what's necessary here. Oh, there is a myriad number of solutions for this, as Silas has pointed out, most of which would not lead to anything spectacular, or some even to deadly terms. But if one was able to channel all of the energies and all of the ideas here, one could do wondrous things. That might have been part of the lesson they were trying to drill home here, as well as give a training ground of each of these different areas. Imagine if you were, you were a young member of Argenti Sagex, fresh from whatever recruitment method they were using, but you didn't have a lot of experience fighting in different planes. These rooms each would serve as a sort of training and fighting pit, with limited consequences or the ability to even turn off the consequences if necessary. So this four-part area was likely for training, but also hiding a gate of some kind, where the concentration of power would be. So does that give you your answer? So you'd need to like combine the power of the, the four elements displayed in this area and use those to open a gate? Stands to reason. That is your third success. So uh, the crystal, the water crystal we found in the fire room, could that have been from somebody's training and not another party? Or somebody who trained poorly? I suppose. Mistakes will be made. And if this place has sat here for thousands of years, there are bound to have been other travelers who've stumbled across it. Not having any background in the Argentic Sagax, or even understanding what's going on, they would have made mistakes. They would have tried several of those dozens of possibilities, and paid for them. Right, so if... If the power needs to be concentrated to open the gate, then we should have all four stones in the sconces in one room, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Which room do we need? I mean, so far everything else seems to be focused on the void room. We could try putting them in there. That yeah, sounds like a good place to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, we did find the fire and water ones both in the fire room, I think. So maybe that would make a second option yeah and uh thinking back to where melora and graveler went i vaguely remember you described it like that's a player question to the dm you described it as a fire or, or as one of the hells was there a lot of fire there uh you hadn't noticed much fire but um i think you had recognized a sort of bleak existence on the other side, and it was definitely more red on the other side, but you didn't really get a chance to look through it that much. In fact, I'm not sure if the portals were actually, I think they were opaque at the time, um, but some sentry magic or something could have been used to determine where they were. I gotcha. think when we, uh, you messaged her, and she said it was like stone and such all around. Okay, so it was probably like where we just came from then. I mean, the outside of whatever this place is, the shadow. It's not called the shadow in this campaign. <laughs> uh, right. In this campaign, you haven't encountered the shadow. Well, you've <laughs> encountered a different shadow. <laughs> Someone named well, the shadow. Head, let's head to the other room, and then uh, if Annie wants to try it, we can do that. Or if we want to go to the next turn, uh, Silas will try it. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind trying the, to put the, the things into the room, although if we're lining it up in the void room, I don't really have a way to get to, to reach all of them. Well, you can still yeah. move the walls if you want to. You'd have to move them back to keep it in line as it is, but 
Uh, the walls yeah, no, will still move, and you guys have been moving around as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, like, in the void room, I literally, I don't have... We, we were moving that one with Mage Hand. Yeah. Specifically True. Because it, it, of... it went vertical, and there's not a lot of places to stand, so Silas might have to do that one. Just yeah. out of... Yeah. Physi yeah. Physical limitations. I mean, You're... I mean, uh... Annie could vault over to it and kind of grab onto the sconce. It seemed pretty solid and try to try to put this the stone in that way. Or these stones, I guess they were doing all of them in that way if you wanted to. Just don't drop one because it's a it's a pretty long drop. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my main fear. <laughs> well, we're stuck here forever, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. You get the uh, feeling I mean, that no one would be stuck here forever. <laughs> they would probably yeah. die before that happens, but... I also leave that up to Annie if she wants to. Uh, if not, he can he can do it, but... Uh... I mean, I'll try doing it. Okay, what's, the, what's the role, and are you asking Gosh to help you? Um... I will try. I'll try acrobatics to try to like maneuver myself up there, and I will ask Gosh to help me by holding the ones that I'm not, like basically passing them to me. That's a great idea. Silas, uh, Silas will give you a uh, "You go, girl" d6. <laughs> <laughs> How much party inspiration do you have left? I have one more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Make okay. your roll. That's uh, add advantage with a bonus. Well, with uh, uh, D six if you need it. Uh, sorry, is D six? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a D six. You don't have to use it, but and uh, indeed, uh, you vault yeah. over with no difficulty whatsoever, and indicate for Gosh to to toss you the stones as each one goes in. First, this room is uh, energized with that uh, that that uh, although you're not feeling the mental side of it it is energized with the the sort of physicality of psychic energy and you are seeing wisps of spirits and different things kind of floating up and through but in rapid succession uh, with gosh there to toss you these stones you place each one in its appropriate space and then feel the energy shift somewhat as the uh, room uh, begins to, uh, uh, as the, sorry, as the pathway reassembles to cross the room on both sides. I don't have a graphic for this, but reassembles uh, as it crosses both sides and one steps towards the center of the room. So that is actually your third, uh, your, sorry, your fourth and fifth successes. Because the thing you didn't, uh, you had to test was whether or not that was in the right place for those stones. Uh, and then, of course, you had to actually place them in which you got uh, a 26 to do. So, before you, at the end of these stones, you see what was simply a solid stone before uh, shift and change into a whirling sp uh, circle of bluish green energy. You believe it to be a portal to where you're not sure. But it's not here. We go and find out. Mm -hmm. Do all Away of you? We go. Do all of you travel through? Yeah. I mean, it seems to be the way. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. All right. As you all enter, there is that familiar feeling of weightlessness, weightlessness, but movement as though you were falling from a high height and had no idea where the bottom would come. It's difficult to orient yourself. Sometimes up feels like up, the same orientation you entered when you, uh, or you felt when you first entered the space. Other times it feels as though up somehow is within you, somehow as though all of your existence is stretched out over the entire universe or over the multi-planes. Eventually, however, you see another swirling circle ahead of you. Off to the sides, in your peripheral vision, but never when you look directly at it, you see in the, in the, in the blankness, it's not even black or white, just somehow void of everything, small pinpricks of light. 
And as you move through, it almost feels as though some of them are paying attention. But each of you arrive uh, popping not vertical as you were before, but in fact popping out of a hole in the ground. You find yourself deposited rather gently, the force at the end of this, enough to propel you outward and take you from that horizontal position to prop you nice and easily on your feet on the rim of this room. The room's walls appear to be stone. The floor itself seems to be stone, but patterned strangely. Long, uh, curving runes with the remnants of a blue, silver energy that's flowing through them. The center of the room is a whirling uh, uh, maelstrom of blue and white and yellow energies. But after the last of you exits, it calms down. To the, well, we'll designate north as the top of this map just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and to the south, you see a, a very complicated apparatus. Seems to me of gleaming metals of multiple kinds that whirl and twist in, into each other. Uh, two arms extend from the wall and hold these orbs of um, what looks like chaotic energy contained within a uh, glass or crystalline sphere. As the whirl ends, the energy within them also seems to dim. And you can see runes around the very inside of the lower area, the sunken area, which is where the, uh, the swirling was, the maelstrom was, and a few runes of, of many runes around the outside seem to dim and fade as if they had briefly been lit. Now, I haven't updated the actual numbers for people's hit points, if people are able to do that. Um, it yeah, probably is. Force damage earlier. Yeah, it's probably going to be important to update those numbers here. Mine are up to date. I know Gosh took some damage earlier. Yeah. I'm not sure if you have it. I'm not sure how to how much HP Dudek has left. Uh, I think both of them uh, took the six. Yeah, Gosh should only have eighteen, but. Uh... Yeah, mine is what it should be, so. Okay. Yeah, because you healed yourself some as well. Okay. All right. Uh, you see that there are, are thin slits in the wall uh, off to your, off to the east, down in this area. Uh, and as you stand there and start to get your bearings, um, oh, and I should say there's also a door uh, here, right behind where Annie appeared. As you start to get your bearings, a loud rumble of thunder um, shakes the whole space. And there's a bright light flashing in through the, the two small, narrow uh, portholes to the southeast. Well, that doesn't sound good. Uh, Dudek will actually poke his head towards it and kind of look out. I don't see much out there, but there seems to be a raging storm not too far away. And again, every few seconds, there's another flash of, of light with thunder scant more than a half a second behind, meaning it was very, very close. Well, uh, who's up for staying inside? Hello, Annie, there's a door behind you. Does it go outside or does it go through another room? What does it sound like? Um, it, you stick your ear to the, to the door, you don't hear anything. The door does seem to be quite thick and solid. There is a layer of dust over everything, as if this place has not been disturbed. Although the maelstrom, which ejected all of you, did stir it up a little bit. So probably in the lingering uh, of the maelstrom light, you do see uh, little motes of dust floating around. And I believe Medric is still glowing a bit, so he's providing a little bit of a, of a nimbus of light. But this does not seem to have... 
as you listen for the crackle of thunder, any louder thunder on the other side. I will check if everyone's okay with me trying to open this door then. Yep. Yep. It opens easily. In fact, I've just used, I'm playing around with Roll20's new features. There's actually a door that you can open and close. I just opened the door so you can now see Love beyond it. it. Uh, and you see uh, a short hallway. It should be said that all the stone here um, looks like it was lovingly carved and all, all the floor and walls are covered with um, iconography and runes, although none of them seem to be powered as the ones you'd just seen were. The floor, though, does look worn, as if many feet have crossed over this space. And feel free to explore. You can see at the end of the hallway, there's another, another door, and the hallway itself seems to continue on. A little bit to the left, you see the remnants of a statue on the uh, left-hand side where Silas has now placed himself. Um, and as you move up towards that hallway, again, you see a heavy door with a symbol on it. Uh, if anybody wants to try to interpret that symbol. Is it something we've seen before? That depends on an, on a roll. It's not something right, immediately really, familiar. Religion check. Am I familiar with this from the studies I've been through? It's not a, a room that just says something like doorway or <laughs> Walmart. Washroom. Washroom. <laughs> Is it, can I roll for religion? Like, yeah, sure. What about a Walmart washroom? <laughs> That'd be a complicated not symbol. Not natural 20. Not natural 20. If it's anything religious, I know it. <laughs> Well, it, it is and it isn't. Um, the derivation of the symbol is familiar, not directly. It is an old, old symbol, and one which is actually incorporated into some of the Ignean practices uh, in a very different form. Uh, essentially, the word that comes to you is rejuvenation. Actually, let me double check on that because I have a different label that I wanted to make sure that got used, and I think I just forgot it. Uh, yes, rejuvenation is what the word would, would mean. In, in, uh, in a religious context, um, in the Ignean rites, rejuvenation is generally by fire. Um, but you do know that the Ignean rites are all about fire. Yeah. Uh, and this would be one of those uh, uh, symbols that would be used for the prayers of healing, uh, restoration and possibly cleansing the spirit. The Ignians tend to be a little bit more extreme in most of their interpretation of things too. And you see there's another door similar to one, the one you just opened. The doors are not complex and they do not appear to be locked, but they appear to be uh, closed and latched as if they wanted them to not accidentally be left open. But they are, and they are heavy, but they do not seem to have any locking mechanism on them. I'll tell the rest of the party. It's like that's a symbol associated with rejuvenation, and like well, everything I know about it. But I'll check on the uh, on the room we just exited. Is there a symbol on the back of that door too? Uh, yes, um, and you can try to interpret that symbol as well. I'll give you advantage on this roll because you're kind of realizing that there's some. This would be the equivalent of someone uh, uh, reading what has now become, say, uh, the at sign and realizing that the at sign was not always just the at sign. It had a whole history of existence before it got to that. So yeah. the, you know, the, you're interpreting quite a bit here um, based on how it reflects on it. And, you, and uh, Dudek opens up a book and starts uh, copying down the symbol and listens intently to your interpretation. But you can make another roll for the door you just left. Look, there's another one there, too. Advantage, 16. 16? Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Uh, again, kind of following a, and, and kind of having to essentially put a hand over one part, which you realize was lost over many generations of, of uh, interpretations and repetition. The door in, it has a surprisingly simple label, travel. What was it? Travel. 
it, it's like all the doors. You know, why can't why can't things be like that everywhere? It's like all the doors are labeled based on what's behind them. So I wonder what's behind the rejuvenation room. You guys check that. I'm gonna wander over here. Don't go too far. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I I will listen to the door to see if there's anything behind it before I open. Okay, make a perception check. And as you travel down that way, you see... 11. 11? It's a very thick door. So if there is any sound, you aren't he hearing much of anything. Um, as you travel down that way, Silas, you see that there are shards of stone. Um, what looks like pottery or, or uh, statuary that were in the sconces you can see along the wall, much like the, the end of the hallway you'd seen before. They have been shattered and broken, however, and are scattered across the floor. Yeah, it looks like someone's been here and broke some stuff. Well, they might still be here. Be careful. And are I'll you going to... open the... Uh for the rejuvenation door. Okay. Uh, there's my cursor. And indeed, the door opens easily. Despite how many thousands of years this door, uh, this uh, place has been here, or how many, maybe even hundreds of years since it opened, it seems to be so well constructed and so, so, uh, 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 well seated as to not uh, need any more than a small amount of effort to open despite the fact that it is a heavy door and in fact looking at it you can also note that it could be locked from the inside which means there probably was some sort of unlocking mechanism on the outside but it was not locked uh, only barred as I'll you step peek into it okay what do I see as you look into the room, I'm just going to move the eyeball. Um, the first thing you notice is that there are five, uh, what look to be stone beds slash chairs, short beds or, or chairs. Um, they resemble beds in that they are, you know, uh, simple constructed uh, rectangles, although again, as is everything around here, covered in runes and covered in in uh, in structures. You can actually make out that in the, uh, very quickly in the in the brief amount of light that you can see, um, there are indentations that are, that are worn into the stone as if it's made to fit someone sitting in the stone or fit someone lying down. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, the uh, around those those stone chairs are shelves, which at one point probably carried something. Now it looks like broken glass uh, and uh, bits and pieces of metal. A few shining stones kind of catch the eye, kind of littered among all of that. Um, you also kind of catch off to your left, so on the west-hand wall, um, you can see a very elaborate carving of a, uh, a beautiful scene. Um, and again, kind of in the, in the corner of your eyes, it looks like a beautiful scene of serenity, some sort of pastoral vision uh, with uh, what looks like a, a, uh, a, a goat-legged figure. Uh, a satyr, perhaps, um, standing and uh, gesturing out towards the viewer of the scene. It is a relief sculpture uh, carved into the wall, carved into the many sections of stone, and almost appears to be open, uh, open, holding an open hand to, uh, as if gesturing uh, to give you something. To your right, though, a bit of motion catches your eye. A spark of light and a bit of motion as a... Um, collection of about 30 tiny little red dots suddenly uh, uh, starts to emerge one by one in the darkness. Uh, and with it, you can hear the sound of, of uh, hundreds of metallic clicks as something seems to have come aware, awake, not sure what. 
but it's low, low to the ground, um, no more than a few inches, and kind of a collection. And it resembles, in this quick glance, spiders. Tiny little spiders, about inch and a half each. And as you stand there, they start to move towards you. Burn it with fire. We got spiders. Mechanical bullshit. Uh, Murder them dead. So let's make uh, let's make an uh, initiative round to see what happens. As things need to be timed here. Um, I will reset the timer or reset the thing. So if you have already uh, done them, I apologize. And I will try to uh, get Gosh and Dudek ready. It may not last that long. I don't know. I rolled a 26. I rolled a... Wait. Let me find it. I know what I'm doing. Barely. Dude. Initiative! Wait, I have to swap my icon. Ha! There you go, you got it to work. Uh... And while we figure out the turn order, do I have time to use washer? Yes. BRB. Oh yeah, I got to have it. All right, uh, we have initiative nine or... If you select your token before rolling, it will automatically populate. So. Yep. I did. Yes. Oh, yeah. You didn't give me a chance yes. to erase it yet. Uh, okay, and Marie got a 26.16. Holy moly. And I believe that's everybody. Just in case the tiebreaker is needed. Absolutely. Uh, decent. There we go. All right, we'll wait a moment for uh, Medric to return. Uh, although Annie will be up first, followed by Gosh and then Medric. Currently, Medric is sort of standing in the way. You'd have to squeeze by him. That is fair. And my eyeball is also in the way. Not the eyeball. Oh, I keep selecting the door, my mistake. There we go. All right, I'm back. How much damage did I take? <laughs> uh, so far, not so much. Uh, it's really... Uh, sorry, my eyeball is in the wrong place. There we go. So far, actually, it's Annie who is ready to respond, although you're taking up the doorway at the moment. I'll get Annie. out of the way. And you've heard, uh, well, it's not your turn yet. <laughs> As Annie is quicker to react than you are. Um, you've um, heard uh, the call of spiders, I guess, is all that was really said. Spiders, mechanical spiders. 
Yep. Uh, it's fucking Flockwinder again. God damn it. All of the spiders. Um, I am going to... Two seconds. I forget what my things do. Well, while you look that up, I will say that, Medric, as you think of that, and maybe say that out loud, mm-hmm. there is I, some I totally sort of connection so. there. I mean, putting it together... Maybe there's more relationship between the Argenti Sagax, Clockwinder, and maybe even the Athlonians? All right. Yeah, well, if I will, I'm not saying this in game, but it's like if uh, Teraz Nakmedwa rule is from the Athlonians and he's involved with Clockwinder, then yeah, there probably is a relation between <laughs> Clockwinder and the Athlonians. <laughs> I um, am going to ready to throw a dart. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can see them from where you are right now, but Uh you're waiting for them to come into range? Yeah. Basically, I'm like, he's he's spooked. Oh, you know what? He mentioned something about spiders. I should probably give them an initiative. (laughs) Why have they never acted? Oh, wait. They don't actually oh, get a I chance just... to. Um, you guys destroyed them for nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will give them a chance to act. Ugh. Still navigating out my uh, fourth screen that I have here. So, okay, they'll go just before Dudek. So you're readying well, an attack with my um, my thorn. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, it, it is Gosh's turn, and Gosh can't see anything. So Gosh is going to go and run back into that other room. Because that seems safer. And he actually closes the door behind him. Yeah, considering how much HP he's got left, it's probably a wise, a wise idea. Yeah, he's not looking great. Um... There's still if plenty I have any of. Spell of... Left, I'll heal you after, gosh. <laughs> uh, that puts it at Medric's turn. How dangerous does the spider swarm look? How dangerous to feel a spider swarm is? They haven't made anything aggressive yet, but they also aren't that close. How close are they? Let me check the map. About uh, 10 feet away. Okay, so um, 15 foot cone, burning hands, level 1. So 3d6. Okay. Is that a, a attack or a saving throw? I believe it's a saving throw. Just let me double check, though. Okay. Just trying to, I'm, I'm assuming it's a dex. Yeah, okay. Each creature in the 15 foot cone must make a, a, a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Failed save, half damage. They're a swarm, so they make it as a single entity. Uh, 14. I forget what my DCs are. <laughs> Spell Probably. DC is 15. Yeah, so it succeeds. The scorching. Uh, fire damage. Sorry, the yes. burning hands, was it? Yeah. Um, the flame uh, flies outward towards them, and you are, I suppose, satisfied to see several of them kind of uh, uh, turn and twist, and the metal starts to congeal and, and uh, connect in terrible ways. Uh, I'll move up to the side, and how bad does this worm look? Well, uh, there is a large chunk of it that seems to be sort of not moving. The rest of it, however, you see the the uh, little red eye that was on it turn to a turquoise blue. Okay. Uh, and sparks start to jump from one to the other to the next. That ain't good. Uh, it's doing something. Let's see. Oh, conveniently, it's their turn. Uh, as they scatter across the floor into small crevices into the walls. You start to hear the sound of those sparks now coming from all spots around the wall. Uh, and uh, 
leaping across some of the metallic instruments and even across the the uh, the uh, uh, tables themselves the, the, or the wooden beds or the metal beds or sorry the stone beds themselves little little sparks are popping out of odd places along them and you realize that if you look really close there's actually small holes permeating the tops of these these tables um, it is not the surface of the table so uh, they have vanished that's not the right button There you go. I need to. Yep, I should have done it. There you go. They vanish. It's gone. I'm sure they'll be back though. I'll explain to my colleagues what happened. It's like the, the red dots turned to like blue dots and turquoise dots, and there were sparks. And now there's sparks in the room, so they're probably gonna like try to electrocute us or something. Y'all should, should, should come check it out. Yes, but, come but, but into but, but the very room carefully. that may be electrocuted. Uh, Dudek kind of pushes politely by you, Annie, to by all peer means. into the room. Um, and immediately, while Dudek was kind of concerned about the spiders, not seeing spiders, he actually walks in and takes a closer look at one of the beds. Um, and kind of notes that every once in a while there's still a little popping sound, as a little bit of electricity uh, vanishes from it. Most curious, I, I've heard of such things. It's some sort of restorative, I think. It's all of his turn. Wait, the, the spiders were, like, helping? Maybe. Uh, oops. Uh, is there a way to restore the ones that are burnt to a crisp on the floor there? Dude, that kind of looks down at them and gives a little kick to, to them. It, they're completely melted slag at this point. They seem to be very delicate. Uh, do, you, do they look like, uh, like a clockwinders work? Uh, well, we'll have a moment for Silas to take a reaction or take an action first before we really... All this is uh, happening did, in a few seconds. Did he also write into stuff <laughs> while I was there? Uh, nope, he didn't see anything other than some smashed statues. Mm hmm Well, they... Uh... Actually, what is your passive perception? Mine? Mine? Yes. Uh... Should be 15, I think. Okay. Then, uh, just at the same time you hear the scorching uh, uh, rays go off, uh, you do hear the sound of sparks up ahead, uh, as well as a larger metal uh, kind of clanging a little bit. Going to go up here and peek around the corner. Just a second, I need to... Move something from where it was. Okay. Uh, as you peek around the corner, uh, you note uh, that there is a... Oops. Here. Around. A little bit... Almost imperceptible, but a little bit of uh, glowing green, red, and turquoise uh, somewhere down the hallway and the sounds get even stronger. It now sounds almost like metal being dragged across stone. Uh, there's a little bit of a, of, a, of a hollow thud from time to time of metal uh, hitting metal um, and it seems to be increasing. But I don't see anything down there from peeking around the corner. Uh, if you take uh, another step forward, you'll actually see around the corner. Uh, so I have to move out into the open to look? Essentially. 
that's the peaking. Plus, it's also how the, the map happens to work for the lighting. Um, as you can make out just at the very end of the hallway, I see that that's not lit up the way it should be. No. Uh, you can make out a, uh, another doorway uh, from which there is light emitting. Okay. Um, I have 60 feet in dark vision. Can I see further down this hallway? Um, a second, these should have been a lot more. Right. Hmm. Okay, still not really registering, but um, you can see town to the end of the hallway, I think, from there. Uh, and you can see that there's a second uh, uh, exit. You also notice there are more sconces here and there. Um, and in and amongst the sconces and the statues, you can see that some some elements of, of them are actually made of, of metal uh, woven into the statues. Uh, and you can see there's an end here, which there probably was a statue at one point, but now not even rubble remains. And you do see two additional entrances down here, and you see a pattern of lights uh, and uh, corresponding sounds like electrical sparks or gaseous flares, uh, again, of the red, green, and turquoise varieties. And they definitely seem to be in time with each other, so both of these doors probably enter into the same space. Okay. He's going to head uh, back over here. And we're super to people that... Uh, there's something electrical sounding going on further down this uh, dogleg tunnel. Uh, there's lights and sounds. Yeah, it's like in this what do you room. Want to do? There was a bunch of tiny spiders. I uh, roasted a few of them. It, that might have been a mistake. We'll, we'll find out at some point. In the next few seconds, does Annie do anything? Um, I am going to step and I'm not going to step into to the room, no. That sounds like a bad idea. Oh, no. It's like stuck beneath the door. <laughs> no. Can you help me, please? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to... Actually, I'll just stand in the doorway. Uh, I, I will let Silas go go through if he needs to, but I'm not going to go into, into the room. Um... If it's just beds in there, Silas doesn't have much of an interest in there. Well, uh, Dudek seems intrigued beds, by something. It, it's beds with with sparky, shocky spiders. That sounds less interesting. Exactly. So I'm I'm going to stand in the doorway and basically ready to attack something if it attacks, but basically be like, okay, do we want to stay in the room with the shocky spiders mm. or are we going to leave the room with the shocky spiders. Uh, Dudek, is there anything in there that we need to take a look at, or can we continue on? Yeah, you seem in intrigued by those bed, table, chair structures. And we can step out of initiative order for the moment, as nothing seems immediately to happen. Those sparking notes that you're seeing around the beds seem to subside, uh, at least for the moment. Um, Dudek's looking around. If I... If I don't miss my guess, this is a rejuvenation chamber of some kind, uh, intended to be able to heal the travelers as they are traveling, as they come through different planes. This would have been a central hub of some kind, or perhaps some other purpose. Uh, there are instruments here, I don't know what they do. Um, kind of. Oh, wait, what? So those were actually like healing spider robots? Uh, well, I. I I really don't know, but they did employ a number of uh, a number of devices from multiple planes. There's a plane called Mechanis, for example, in which many of their citizens, uh, from the legends I've read so far, resemble automatons or even 
people, but are manufactured out of metal and gears and so forth. Maybe those were inhabitants of that plane at one point, domesticated, or, or maybe they were just here by accident. I, I really don't know. Uh, based on your knowledge of this plane of Mechanus, what's Mechanus for, I'm sorry, I roasted your friends? Oh, I, <laughs> I don't think I have anything so sophisticated I could be able to say. That's well, interesting. Um, and he, he kind of walks right by you, kind of mid-conversation, and walks over to the mural. Did you see this? Yeah, and there's like shiny stones over there, and I'll point like where you said the shiny stones were. No, no, I mean this, and he points down to the very bottom of it. And you can see mm, yeah. there is uh, a, uh, a small hole, uh, more or less like a, uh, a spigot, which actually resembles the same sort of spigot you saw in the, uh, in the other area where um, Tauzek Riva was, and something that Dudek had taken some interest in, the, in that uh, way as well. Um, around the outside of the socket, as he points it out, you can see that there are runes in Dwarven, Elvish, uh, Orcish, and Gnomish. Um, cool. And so, if you, I think all, I think all three of you speak at least one of those languages, or read at least one of those languages. Yeah, I only uh, got Orphish, but it's still, it's a very simple kind of uh, phrase. It just says "peaceful slumber." I think, once again, these amulets of ours uh, would be useful in this context. I do believe yeah. we can activate this socket of some kind to generate some sort of effect. If this is a room of regeneration or rejuvenation, I would expect something positive. Uh, should I try sitting on one of those beds and hope for the best? I mean, if this place still serves its original purpose, I see no reason not to. All right, hopefully the mechanical spiders aren't too pissed at me. And I'll go over here. <laughs> Bye, but he can't get into the room. And I'll whisper, sorry again. He can't get into the room? No. The door's locked. Mm, you should oh, be able to. I can now. I think the door was locked. Okay. The two of them lie yeah. down on two of the beds. Not they a, are... Like, sure. I'll try. I'll give this a try. Okay. Um, the door down the hallway opens up as Gosh uh, kind of pokes his head out to see what's going on, <laughs> but hasn't really moved at all. Uh, Annie, are you joining them on the beds, or are you going to uh, if refrain? If these fools die because they're trying to heal themselves, I want to be there to laugh. So no, no, I'm going to stay in the doorway. Okay. I do not trust the shocky spiders. Uh, Maybe and, just angered. And again, no <laughs> no evidence of them at the moment, other than the pile of slag that's melted down and sitting on the floor. Um, right, I think this, and he kind of takes, uh, Dudek takes the, 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 the amulet you've been given, which again is kind of a square of metal with, with uh, uh, wires run to hold a, a small uh, uh, crystal in the center, kind of... Uh, maneuvers and pops the crystal out of the, the space, inserts it into what looks like a very well-fit socket. Uh, and then the stone on the wall gets color. It had just been simple plain stone before, but now it appears almost as though you're looking through a stained glass window. And in fact, you can even see that beyond the surface of it, things seem to be moving. There's a little bit of grass moving in the breeze behind, and the tree kind of bobs on an invisible piece of wind. Uh, and the satyr smiles as a thick greenish gas pours out from uh, openings beneath the uh, beneath the uh, the icon and flow click, click quickly out through the room. Can I have a yes. con save for uh, Dudek, uh, Annie, Medrick, and uh, Silas, and a it's dex really save nice. from uh, from uh, Annie as well? That's a four. Okay. 
Um, and you're watching these fools. That's what they're doing. And the, the, probably the phrase that comes to mind is something along the lines of, I told you so, or I knew it, or something like that. As the gas Don't wafts stress. over you quickly. Spiders. Um, and while you're kind of leaning into the room and leaning on the door, the door quickly opens. You fall onto the floor and the door closes behind you to the sound of a click. Um, all four of you are unconscious. That is, that is the opposite of rejuvenation. Is it poison? <laughs> uh, it is not We'll find poison. out next episode. <laughs> well, that, that is where I'm going to probably draw it to a close <laughs> for today, because it seems like an interesting place to, to do so. Uh, I'm just All trying to... All the PCs are unconscious. <laughs> just trying to We're find my notes page here, just to make sure. Well, uh, actually, sorry, it does count as poison. Are, are you immune to poison? <laughs> Yes. Okay, then you are not unconscious. However, the room is filling up with this rather pleasant smelling green uh, green uh, uh, fog, almost like a, almost like fresh, fresh mown grass. Mm. Uh, well, I'm gonna assume this is good and just rest here. All right. Uh, yeah, my friends just hide, don't worry. <laughs> And I'll, I'll do this one last part. Um, okay. So those of you who, who, uh, who failed, which is everybody except for Silas, um, you feel a sense of inner calm and peace, and your dreams are undisturbed. You dream of a happy time, a peaceful time, a simple time, perhaps a childhood moment, perhaps a, a moment where you received a gift. You feel elated. Uh, do any of you have the following conditions? Uh, exhaustion, poisoned, stunned, deafened, or unconscious. Well, unconscious is a different kind of decision. Uh, you are going to be unconscious, but if you were suffering from a, ma a magical condition, uh, one of those would be removed. Uh, in addition... All of you receive seven hit points back. Yay. Um, you actually I bet you hear. Gosh wishes he was in here now. Well, you actually hear Gosh on the outside, uh, uh, kind of banging on the door. Um, well, actually, Silas is the only one who notices Gosh banging on the door. Uh, I should say, actually, I got a check for Dudek. He might have succeeded. Um, mm -mm. Uh, where are you, dude? I have too many windows open. Silas yells at Gosh to go away. He's sleeping. <laughs> uh, and that is going to be... Uh, was a con save. Uh, and... That is a fail. So he indeed is, in fact, also unconscious. Um, so he'll receive those seven hit points as well. Join us in the healing cloud, man. Uh... Uh, the effect seems to, to linger for nearly a minute. Uh, at that point, Silas is the only one still awake. Uh, you notice there's little pinpricks in the holes that uh, appeared along the sides of the beds uh, as small metallic probes seem to come out. The rest do not notice this. Uh, you can move out of the way easily because you're able to move. Uh, Dudek is not on, a, on one of the beds. So he's just lying on the floor. Almost as quickly as I it appears. Also face first on the floor. Oh yes, that's right. And he is on the floor as well. So really, only Medric uh, has to worry about the probing that's going on. It's a healing probing, right? <laughs> uh, well, you have no idea. In fact, nobody does at this point. Um, good feelings. But after about a minute, I don't care what's um, going on. <laughs> the image on the wall, which only Silas sees at this point, uh, seems to wink. And the color seems to fade from the relief, and all of the gas exit the whence it came. And the little socket now, the little uh, stone that was in the socket, which had flared a momentary with a, a little brilliant light, and now goes dim. And the door unlocks. Well, Silas gets up. <laughs> 
Um, you do notice that your companions do look a bit, bit better for, uh, for all that. But unfortunately, whatever they had tried to do did not work on you, for better or for worse. Well, what happened? Uh, you guys are still unconscious. Oh, okay, we are. I thought we were. I think we were at the end now. of a, at the end of a minute, uh, they can be roused, but they aren't automatically roused. They are in a deep, yeah. comfortable sleep at this point. Even Annie, who fell flat flat on her face, seems to be kind of you know in that weird sprawl that you get when you're just so tired you collapse into something. So it's like arms akimbo potentially, but still looks comfortable somehow. I mean, I deep can snore. They they could probably use a rest, but I suppose we've got work that needs to be done, so I'll wake Annie up. And Gosh pushes his way through the door, runs in, <laughs> and closes the door behind him and runs across to the other side of the room. All of you hear a loud series of thumps coming closer up the hallway. And that's where we'll end it for today. <laughs> I'd say lock the door, but I'm just like sleeping peacefully. <laughs> it's true. So there you go. You've now ended in an entirely different place with entirely different problems and possibly some mm. good things as well. Please tell the spiders I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, with that, uh, we will hopefully return in two weeks. We've had a bad time. Summer is always one of those times when everything interferes with uh, regular anything. So, uh, yep. and the technology was not a, not appealing today, but it seemed to work out for enough for today, hopefully. Uh, if you are watching this live, thank you very much for joining us on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. The intent is that every other Sunday, about 3 o'clock, Atlantic time uh, we come on here and play for a couple of hours uh, today was a bit later because again technology I should know better I used to work in technology uh, but in a couple of weeks we'll return otherwise you can also catch up on previous episodes this is episode 68 we've had 68 sessions of this game can you believe that I think we surpassed the original game already somehow I don't know. I think so. Awfully oh, close. Really? Anyway, I'll have to look it up. We might be 70s in the original, but it's it's awfully close. Well, we'll know if we hit three digits. Then we'll, then we'll be fine. Uh, but you can catch up all of those on YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles for the master playlist, which contains the first campaign, which uh, did not end so much as it had to end. <laughs> we never reached a conclusion of that campaign. Maybe someday we'll be able to go back and revisit that. Uh, yes, please. But you can also find a... Uh, uh, L-O-T-D-I, the Great Confusion playlist to find specifically the stuff happened this week. Thanks again to my players. Thanks to you for watching. And uh, yeah, have fun. I, don't, I never did have a, a sign up for this. Well, have fun. Oh, a window popped up. I can't change screens away. We can't end this yet. No. Uh. Now it's ending awkwardly. <laughs> Always awkward. Thanks for running.